The Brighton Crystal Palace rivalry, also nicknamed the A23 Derby and the M23 Derby, is the derby between English football teams Brighton and Hove Albion and Crystal Palace. The nicknames come from the A23 Road and the M23 Motorway between Sussex and South London. While the A23 does connect Brighton to Croydon, where Crystal Palace's stadium is based, the M23 does not directly connect to either location, running between the M25 and Crawley. The rivalry did not seriously arise until the late 1970s, when both teams, under the guidance of ambitious young managers, rose from the third division to the first division. Roy Hodgson, current manager of Palace, has stated that he does not recall such any such rivalry with Brighton as a Palace fan in the 1950s to 60s. Until Crawley Town were promoted to the Football League in 2011, Palace were the nearest other professional club to Brighton. Brighton currently boasts the superior head-to-head -head record in the Derby, with 40 total wins against Crystal Palace to their 38. Palace have won five cup games and Brighton three, while Brighton have won 37 league games and Palace 33. Topic. Background Brighton and Crystal Palace had both been founding members of the Football League 3rd Division in 1920, having transferred over from the Southern Football League with other founding members. The two clubs had met in regular Southern League matches since 1906. During the 1940s and 1950s the clubs met 21 times in 12 years, including two memorable back-to-back -back matches on Christmas Day and Boxing Day, 1951. However, the animosity between the two sets of supporters arose in the mid to late 1970s. The teams had not met at all for 11 years, when they played each other on the opening day of the 1974-75 season in the third division, Palace having been relegated from the tier above the previous season. Brighton were then managed by Peter Taylor, following the recent departure of Brian Clough, Palace by the flamboyant Malcolm Allison. Extra police were deployed to control the 26,000 crowd, far higher than Brighton's usual attendance, and there were multiple arrests and fighting between fans inside and outside the Goldstone ground, with excessive drinking due to the hot weather blamed for the trouble. Brighton won 1-0, Palace winning the return fixture later that season 3-0. The following season witnessed both clubs vying for promotion. The league game between the two sides at Selhurst Park was played in front of a crowd of over 25,000, Palace's highest home attendance for two years. Malcolm Allison complained that Brighton had secured their 1-0 victory by their overly physical tactics. The Evening Argus reported that the game had been played in a cup tie atmosphere with the cut and thrust carried through with the zest of deadly rivals. The return match at the Goldstone ground saw over 33,000 crammed into the stadium to see a third-tier match. That game, which the home side won 2-0 with two goals by Sammy Morgan, is generally attributed as giving birth to Brighton's current nickname of Seagulls. They had been known previously as the Dolphins. Later adopted officially by the club, see below, as it was sung on the terraces as a humorous counter chant to Palace's Eagles. The home side's victory was overshadowed by more crowd trouble, as referee Ron Shalley threatened to abandon the game due to Palace fans throwing smoke bombs and other missiles on the pitch. Both teams narrowly missed out on promotion that year. In the summer of 1976, Terry Venables became Crystal Palace manager and Alan Mullery Brighton manager. The pair had spent time together on the field as players at Tottenham, and Venables was second in command to Mullery's captaincy at the club. Mullery has described this power dynamic as a reason for the rivalry between them. Whilst at Tottenham, Venables reportedly did not have a good relationship with his manager Bill Nicholson, believing him to have a negative attitude that drained him of enthusiasm. 
Venables also felt that he was not appreciated by Spurs fans, in contrast to Mullery, who was Nicholson's and the fans' favorite. The two young managers were set the same task, promotion from the third division. The first meeting between the clubs that season was the league match at the Goldstone on 2 October, which ended 1-1. During the game, as once again smoke bombs were thrown onto the pitch and play was stopped three times throughout the match, the clubs were then drawn together in the first round of the FA Cup, played on 20 November at the Goldstone, the match ended 2-2-2. After the game, Mullery was critical of his opposite number, bemoaning what he perceived to be Palace's negative tactics. A replay took place at Selhurst three days later. The match finished 1 1 after extra time, and the teams faced a second replay. Brighton were described as dominating much of the play in the two games, which both attracted attendances of almost 30,000. This attendance figure was a significant increase on both clubs' averages for the season, with Palace averaging just 15,925 that season and Brighton 20,197. The second replay, postponed twice due to bad weather, took place at Stamford Bridge on 6 December. Palace took the lead after 18 minutes through Phil Holder. Brighton dominated much of the game's remainder, with striker Peter Ward having a goal disallowed shortly after as he was adjudged to have handled the ball, although Palace's Jim Cannon later said that this only occurred due to him shoving the Brighton striker. In the 78th minute, Brighton were awarded a penalty which was converted by Brian Horton only to be disallowed as referee Ron Shalley adjudged that players had encroached upon the penalty area. Horton retook the penalty and this time it was saved by the Palace keeper, Paul Hammond. The match ended 1-0 to Crystal Palace. After the final whistle, Mullery approached Shally to discuss the decision and was escorted off the pitch by police while flicking V signs and swearing at the Palace supporters in the stands. The Brighton manager then allegedly entered the Palace dressing room, threw five pounds on the floor and told Venables. Your team's not worth that. Mullery was fined £100 by the FA for bringing the game into disrepute. On 12 March 1977, the two sides met again in the league at Selhurst and Palace ran out 3-1 winners. A crowd of 28,808, nearly double Palace's average for the season, was present. That season both teams were promoted with Brighton finishing as runners-up, two points in front of Palace. Brighton also changed their official nickname from the Dolphins to the Seagulls, in direct opposition to the Crystal Palace nickname the Eagles. The rivalry continued with the club's meeting with the same objective and same managers in the 1977-78 season and 1978-79 season, this time vying for a spot in the top flight of English football. In 1978, Brighton missed out on promotion on goal difference, finishing in fourth place and well ahead of Crystal Palace in ninth, but the head-to-head -head battle continued the following season. Both of the league meetings between the two teams in 1977-78 finished level, Brighton completed their 1978-79 campaign top of the league. Palace, though, still had a game in hand to play against Burnley due to postponements throughout the season, Palace won the match, played in front of 51,000 spectators, and took the title by one point. For the second time in three years, the two clubs had been promoted together. Palace also boasted the bragging rights head-to-head -head with Brighton that season, after they had defeated Brighton 3-2-1 at Selhurst, a win that would prove vital at the end of the season. While the return game in February was goalless, the two clubs subsequently met in the top flight of English football in the 1979-80 season, and Brighton emerged with the bragging rights early in the season, by beating Palace 3-0 on Boxing Day 1979 at the Goldstone, Mullery states that the rivalry was fueled by both competition between the teams and directly between the managers. Terry Venables, highly controversially, left Palace in 1980 for Queen's Park Rangers while Alan Mullery left Brighton in 1981.
Both clubs were relegated from the first division within several years, Palace in 1981 and Brighton in 1983. The two years that Brighton spent above Palace from 1981 to 1983 have since been the only years that Brighton have competed in a higher league than Crystal Palace. Mullery went on to manage Crystal Palace for two seasons 1982 and then returned to Brighton for the 1986–87 season. Topic. 1980s The rivalry between the two clubs carried on throughout the 1980s. Following their joint promotion to the first division in 1979, the teams met four times in the top flight with Palace failing to record a victory against Brighton. In 1982, Crystal Palace chairman Ron Noades appointed Alan Mullery as Palace manager, which was met with hostility by Palace fans. Crowds at Selhurst dropped significantly partly as a result of the appointment, and Mullery's record against Brighton as Crystal Palace manager was poor, losing both his clashes against the Seagulls. Mullery eventually left the club in 1984, with both sides back in the second tier. The 1985 match at Selhurst Park saw the end of Brighton favourite Jerry Ryan's career following a tackle by Palace defender Henry Hewton, which broke the winger's leg in three separate places. The game was followed by some of the worst violence seen between the two sets of fans. Brighton dominated the rivalry throughout much of the 1980s, with Palace earning their first win of the decade against Brighton in 1986 under the management of Steve Koppel, a 1-0 win that put an end to Brighton's promotion push that season. Alan Mullery returned as Brighton manager in 1986, and on Boxing Day the same year, Palace earned a 2-0 victory against their former manager's team at Selhurst Park. Mullery left Brighton soon after, and they finished the season at the bottom of the table. Palace, after losing 2-0 to Brighton at the Goldstone amidst violent scenes in the crowd in late April 1987, missed out on the newly formed playoffs by two points. Brighton earned promotion back to the second division in 1988, bringing back the rivalry with Palace after a season's absence. In 1989, referee Kelvin Morton awarded five penalties in a Crystal Palace v Brighton game, all awarded in a 27-minute spell, a football league record. Palace were awarded four of the penalties, and they missed three of them but still won the match 2-1, with a goal from Ian Wright and a successful penalty from Mark Bright enough to earn victory against 10-man Brighton. Crystal Palace earned promotion to the first division that season, while Brighton remained a second division club. Topic. Recent encounters Brighton's off-the-field ownership problems in the 1990s led to the club's only meeting four times in the league between 1990 and 2011, with Brighton struggling in the third and fourth tiers of English football for much of the 1990s. In both 1997 and 1998, Brighton nearly drifted out of the football league altogether, finishing 91st out of 92 clubs in the football league in both seasons. The league match between the two sides on 26 October 2002 at Selhurst Park was the first time the teams had met for 13 years. Palace ran out 5-0 winners. Brighton had their revenge three seasons later when a Paul McShane goal gave them a long-awaited victory at the home of their rivals. The first game between the two teams at Brighton's new Falmer Stadium, in September 2011, was won by Crystal Palace 3-1, with former Brighton striker Glenn Murray scoring for Palace, after he had left Brighton for Palace on a free transfer that summer. It was the first league defeat Brighton had suffered at their new stadium however the team went on to finish the season in 10th position, seven places higher than Crystal Palace. 
During the 2012-13 season, the two clubs met each other a total of four times, in both the league and the two-legged championship playoff semifinal after the conclusion of the regular season. In December 2012, Crystal Palace defeated Brighton 3-0 in the league at Selhurst Park, with two Palace goals coming from former Brighton striker Glenn Murray. Brighton had been reduced to 10 men after Lewis Dunk received a red card, and they could not stop an inform Palace side. In March 2013, Brighton exacted revenge and dispatched Palace in a 3 0 home win, a defeat that saw the Eagles embark on a horrific run of form towards the end of the season. It was Brighton's first home league win against Palace in 25 years. The two teams met in the 2012-13 Championship Playoff semi-finals, by virtue of Brighton finishing fourth and Palace finishing fifth in the league. Following an uneventful 0-0 draw between the teams at Selhurst Park, Crystal Palace won 2-0 away at the Amex Stadium and went on to gain promotion to the Premier League by defeating Watford 1-0 after extra time in the playoff final. The second leg of Brighton's playoff tie with Crystal Palace was marred by a bizarre off-field incident. Human excrement was discovered smeared across the floor in the away dressing room toilets, in what was perceived to be an attempt to unsettle the opposition. Brighton's subsequent investigation failed to identify the perpetrator, although former Palace player Paddy McCarthy has since revealed that it was the Crystal Palace coach driver, stating that the dressing room scandal at Brighton was thanks to our coach driver who couldn't control himself. Brighton manager Gus Poyet reacted furiously to the incident, and sent out an email to club staff demanding an explanation for the events that had unfolded. Shortly afterwards, Poyet was suspended by Brighton over an unrelated alleged breach of contract. In the 2016 17 season, four seasons after the two clubs met in the playoffs, Brighton won promotion to the Premier League as runners up to Newcastle United, bringing the rivalry back to the top division for the first time in 36 years, and to the Premier League for the first time since it was founded. The first occurrence of the Derby in the Premier League ended as an uneventful 0-0 draw at the Amex Stadium on 28 November 2017. A point apiece for both sides left Brighton in 10th place, with Palace still rooted to the bottom of the table in 20th place. Former Palace striker Glenn Murray started the match for Brighton, having returned to the Seagulls for a second spell in 2016. However, the return of the Derby was marred by disorderly behavior from visiting supporters. Several stewards from both clubs suffered minor injuries as a result of fan behavior, with one steward from each club hospitalized. Brighton, in collaboration with Sussex Police, had also made the decision to close stadium entry six minutes into the game due to ticket-less fans forcing entry into the away end. The decision left some fans with tickets unable to enter the stadium. Sussex police apologized a few days after the game for claiming that Palace fans had turned up to the ground with weapons, admitting that no such implements were found. Brighton and Crystal Palace were drawn against each other for a tie in the third round of the 2017-18 FA Cup, played at Brighton's Amex Stadium on 8 January 2018. This was the first match in England to use video assistant referee VAR technology. Brighton won the match 2-1, with goals from Dale Stevens and ex-Palace striker Glenn Murray sending the Seagulls through to the fourth round for a tie against Middlesbrough. In the return Premier League fixture in April, the teams exchanged five goals in the first 34 minutes, with Palace racing into an early 2-0 lead, and winning the match 3-2. The first match between the two teams the following season was another incident-filled encounter held at the Amex on 4 December 2018. Former Palace man Glenn Murray gave Brighton the lead early in the first half with a disputed penalty. Minutes later, appeals for a second Brighton penalty were turned down. In the resulting melee, Brighton defender Shane Duffy was sent off for a headbutt on Palace defender Patrick Van Anholt. 
Moments later, defender Leon Balogun was brought on as a substitute and scored with his first touch to put Brighton 2-0 up. In the final minute of first half added time, another first half substitute, Florin Adone, scored a solo goal to give 10-man Brighton a 3-0 half-time lead. This was the first time in Premier League history that two substitutes for one team had scored in a match before half-time. Palace pulled a goal back late in the second half through a Luka Milivojevic penalty, but Brighton were convincing winners. Topic players who have represented both clubs The following footballers have played for both Brighton and Hove Albion and Crystal Palace. Topic. Match history Topic. Summary The two teams have played a total of 101 games in League and Cup, scoring a total of 273 goals. Brighton have scored 135 and Palace 140. Topic. League Only English Football League matches are counted. Topic Other Topic See also Sports Rivalry Local Derbies in the United Kingdom Topic Footnotes and References